Intel, once the king of semiconductors, is now facing a storm it might not survive. They, they had a hockey stick in the back half from last quarter. Clearly the back half is not playing out the way they thought. Gross margins are, are, are falling into the abyss as uh, uh, they get higher costs on their chips. Um, you know, clear, clearly they're in a tough spot. From record-breaking revenues of $79 billion in 2021 to $54 billion in 2023, a 14% decline from 2022. The company also plans to lay off 15,000 employees, an integral part of the $10 billion cost reduction project. Intel's fall from dominance isn't just about technology. It has to do with something more powerful. But how did a tech giant lose its edge? And is there any hope for a comeback? Let's dive into the rise, the fall, and what's next for Intel. Intel's story begins in 1968, when Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore co-founded the company in California. Intel quickly became a household name by dominating the semiconductor industry. The launch of the 4004 microprocessor in 1971 marked the beginning of a new era for computing. By the 1990s, Intel had established itself as the leader in CPUs, central processing units, the brains behind personal computers. Intel's Intel in Inside marketing campaign became iconic, positioning the brand as synonymous with quality and innovation. In 1992, the company became the world's largest semiconductor maker, a title it held for decades. Its Pentium processors were the gold standard in personal computing, and its x86 architecture became the industry default. The numbers were staggering. By the fourth quarter of 2000, Intel generated $20 billion in revenue and had a market share of over 83% in the CPU market. It wasn't just dominating PCs, Intel's chips-powered servers enabled the rapid growth of the internet. The company's innovative manufacturing processes were unmatched. It consistently reduced transistor sizes, enabling faster and more efficient processors. This relentless focus on scaling technology, famously described by Gordon Moore as Moore's Law, drove Intel's success. Intel's partnerships also solidified its dominance. Collaboration with Microsoft, known as the Wintel Alliance ensured that most PCs ran on Intel chips and Windows software. For decades, Intel seemed unstoppable. But while Intel reigned supreme in the CPU market, cracks in its foundation were beginning to form. The company's reliance on its existing success blinded it to emerging opportunities. By the mid-2000s, competition and changing technology trends started to challenge its dominance. Intel's decline wasn't sudden, it was the result of years of missed opportunities, strategic errors, and growing competition. One of the first major blows came from its longtime rival, AMD, or Advanced Micro Devices. AMD's Ryzen processors, launched in 2017, offered better performance at lower prices, disrupting Intel's hold on the CPU market. By 2023, AMD had captured 40% of the desktop CPU market, a significant leap from its early earlier single-digit market share. The company's struggles weren't just about competitors. Intel faced delays in its transition to 10 nanometer manufacturing, a critical next step in chip technology. While competitors like Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company, TSMC, and Samsung advanced to 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer processes, Intel fell behind. These delays frustrated customers and allowed rivals to take market share. The rise of artificial intelligence, AI, also exposed Intel's weaknesses. Companies like NVIDIA dominated the AI chip market with their GPUs or graphics processing units. While Intel focused on CPUs, NVIDIA's GPUs became the backbone of AI research and data centers. By 2024, NVIDIA's market capitalization had soared past Intel's, cementing its position as the leader in AI hardware. Intel's revenue paints a stark picture of its decline. In 2020, the company generated $77.86 billion billion dollars in revenue. By 2023, that number had dropped to $54.22 billion. Its stock price also reflected investor concerns, falling from $60 in 2021 to under $35 in late 2024. Leadership instability further compounded Intel's challenges. In 2021, Pat Gelsinger was brought in as CEO to turn the company around. While he made bold promises, including doubling down on manufacturing and AI, the results have been mixed. Layoffs, asset sales, and restructuring have kept Intel in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. 
Despite its challenges, Intel isn't out of the game yet. Under Pat Gelsinger's leadership, the company has initiated bold strategies aimed at reclaiming its dominance. One of Intel's key moves is its $20 billion investment to build two advanced chip factories in Ohio, with ambitions to rival the manufacturing prowess of Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company TSMC and Samsung. These facilities, dubbed Megafabs, aim to restore Intel's position as a leader in cutting-edge semiconductor manufacturing manufacturing. Unfortunately, Gelsinger has stepped down as the company's CEO, but hopefully the team will pursue his dreams. Additionally, Intel is doubling down on the AI market, attempting to compete with Nvidia and other rivals. Its Gaudi line of AI processors, though still trailing Nvidia's GPUs, shows potential for future growth. The company has also partnered with other tech giants, emphasizing collaborations to regain its foothold in the data center and cloud computing markets. Intel's expansion in to foundry services, producing chips for other companies, represents another critical pivot. With the global semiconductor shortage exposing vulnerabilities in supply chains, Intel hopes to attract customers seeking reliable US-based manufacturing. However, the road ahead won't be easy. Competing against established players like TSMC requires overcoming years of technical and operational setbacks. Investors and analysts remain cautious. While Intel's recent restructuring and investment demonstrate its commitment to change, results take time. Critics argue that the company's fragmented focus, juggling CPUs, AI, and foundry services, might hinder its ability to execute effectively. However, with the semiconductor industry projected to grow to $1 trillion by 2030, Intel has a massive opportunity if it can adapt to the new market realities. The question remains, can Intel innovate quickly enough to regain its crown, or will it remain a shadow of its former self? As we watch the company navigate this critical phase, one thing is clear, Intel's story isn't over, but its next chapter will define its legacy.